watching Wake Up Show to Go. Thanks for joining us here. I'm Ben Thompson. And I'm Carolyn Brooke. He is Larry Sprinkle. And the forecast today is really nice, Larry. It definitely is. Now, we got some fog in some areas this morning, so that would be the issue, especially when you go east of Charlotte. Like Highway 74 between, say, Wagesboro, Rockingham, all the way to the Carolina coastline, areas from Stanley County, uh, less than a quarter of a mile visibility in many of the spots. So be aware of that. Be aware that it was cold this morning. It has been cold. Low in Charlotte, 29 degrees this morning. It was 32 at Monroe, 34 at Boone. So Boone actually a milder reading than what we had here. It was 30 at Shelby, 30 at Statesville as we take a look at the next today, tomorrow and Thursday. Pretty close to perfect weather. The warmest streak we have seen in quite some time really since uh, since last fall. We're looking at uh, temperatures at 65 today. We'll say low to mid 60s today, 68 tomorrow around 63. A little more cloudiness around on Thursday. Even in the mountains today, beautiful weather. High about 52 at Boone Foothills, low to mid 60s for the Charlotte metro area. We're looking at temperatures this afternoon also in the low to mid 60s. East of here, Monroe, Wadesboro, Rockingham, maybe a, maybe a couple of spots make it into the upper 60s. Seven day forecast shows about 65 today, upper 60s tomorrow, maybe 70 in a couple of spots. Clouds move in on Thursday, but still pretty pleasant. Unfortunately, Friday turns out to be a very chilly, rainy day and looking ahead of this upcoming weekend. At least the temperature should be OK with the upper 50s to low 60s, but rain. Saturday, Sunday, even into Monday next week. And that's your first one forecast this morning. Larry, thanks. Turning now to our top stories of the morning. Today, CMS leaders will discuss what is going well and what needs to change as students slowly return to the classroom. Good Tuesday morning. I'm Richard Devane here at CMS headquarters where today they'll look at the COVID metrics, seeing how the numbers have fared over the last couple weeks, especially with more students returning to school. They'll also discuss how to get more kids in class full time and also they'll look at the graduation, how they plan to have them and if they will, what they'll look like. Tomorrow, teachers in North Carolina will become eligible for the COVID-19 vaccine. Several local districts have plans to start immediately. Teachers from Gaston County, Iredell, Statesville and Watauga County schools will roll up their sleeves tomorrow. Now, several other districts have clinics planned for later on in the week. The North Carolina Department of Health says last week's vaccine shipments should finally reach their destinations by tomorrow. The shipments were stalled by severe weather across much of the country. Local counties expected to receive both last week's and this week's shipments by Wednesday and will update their vaccine appointments accordingly. Tonight, Chester County school leaders are answering your questions about sending kids back into the classroom. The school board hosting a virtual town hall at 6 p.m. Right now, the majority of Chester County students are on a hybrid learning schedule with multiple days in the classroom each week. I'm Tracy Potts. President Biden holding his first bilateral meeting with a foreign leader today, Canada's Justin Trudeau. He and the prime minister are expected to talk about trade, climate, and the pandemic response. On Capitol Hill, a hearing, a joint committee hearing about last month's Capitol attack, testifying today the D.C. police chief, the former Capitol police chief, and both the House and Senate sergeants at arms, they resigned after that attack. Time now to connect the dots when we make the news make sense. An election in Charlotte set for this November may get pushed back, pushed back a whole year, and it's all because the pandemic. A delay in the census means Charlotte City Council elections are likely going to be put off till next year. Let's connect the dots. The city needs census data before an election. They need to make sure every district has proper representation. The issue? This year, the Census Bureau delayed when they hand over that information to cities. Normally, it happens March 31st. But because of the pandemic, Charlotte City leaders won't get that information until the end of September. That does not give leaders enough time to analyze new data and redraw district maps. It's no secret Charlotte's constantly growing. City leaders know some of the districts are unbalanced based on projections from 2018. That means legally, they can't hold an election. If they did, they'd likely face a lawsuit. The other option, put off the election till 2022. And that is connecting the dots. We should say no final decision has been announced just yet, but during last night's city council meeting, the city attorney said the likelihood they'll hold elections this year is quote, slim to none. This morning, there's a lot of buzz about the ticket prices for Charlotte Football Club. It's the MLS, the soccer, Major League Soccer team coming to Charlotte. It's the first team in the league that's actually requiring you buy personal seat licenses to buy the tickets. So it's it's a one-time fee. It's a PSL fee. It's anywhere from 350 to 900 bucks. And then after you pay that, you actually have to pay for the season tickets. And those are pricey as well. Some of those up to 2200 bucks per ticket. 
uh, now is or per season ticket package. Now is important to uh, note that if you get season tickets in what's called the supporter section, you don't have to pay that extra fee. But for all the other season ticket sections, you'll be paying that extra fee. The Charlotte Football Club says that part of the reason the prices are so high is you get perks, things like free food and drink credits for every game and access to club lounges. The Carolina Panthers and Charlotte Hornets, they have PSLs, but still a lot of fans are, are frustrated. Alex saying he thought it would be a great way to have some affordable fun post pandemic, but now he's thinking not so much. Scotty saying he was going to give soccer a chance until he saw those high prices. Austin saying he always dreamt of having a Charlotte team's season tickets, but now, well, now this is going to make that dream basically impossible. So let us know what you think. Charlotte Football Club, PSLs, too much to pay? Weigh in, use the hashtag WakeUpCLT. And you know the good news is, you can watch us for free That's every right, single charge. morning, <laughs> starting and at 4.30 you know a.m. Yeah, we'll throw in Larry Sprinkle, too. What else do you want? I mean, and that should cost you. That but here, anywhere else, that would cost you. It's free for you, starting at 4.30 on Wake Up Charlotte.